It has taken just over 750 years to develop the optical microscope as we know it, from its early beginnings as a green glass monocle. During that period, the use of one particular form of the instrument was to become a defining moment for microscopy. That instrument, known as a simple or single lens microscope, became popular during the 17th and 18th centuries, notably used and documented by Robert Hooke, and a few years later by Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. Although we can admire those magnificent hand-drawn micrographs published in Robert Hooke's 1665 book, Micrographia, we cannot fully appreciate what they could actually see, the difficulties experienced, and tremendous skill and dexterity required to achieve what they did. Bear in mind they worked in poorly lit rooms, relying on illumination provided either by sunlight through a window, or at other times by candle or oil light. So let's try and put ourselves in their shoes as it were, and take a look through one of those early 18th century simple microscopes. The one I've chosen is this extremely rare instrument made circa 1785 by Thomas Fuller, an apprentice watch and clockmaker from the city of Norwich, Norfolk in the UK. This brass microscope has six round glass lenses ranging from times 5 to times 60 magnification, which are mounted between the rotating turret plates. Stage plate focusing is achieved by means of a rack and pinion. The microscope's small size, its somewhat difficult to operate coarse focus control, and general lack of rigidity requires some dexterity to use, making the locating and focusing of an object a rather hit and miss affair. We'll use a modern stage graticule marked with 100 divisions, each 10 microns apart, to enable us to gauge the quality and resolution of the simple lenses used in this particular microscope. Not too difficult using the times 5 low power lens number 1. We cannot resolve the individual 10 micron marker lines, but can easily resolve the 50 micron ones. Now for a mid-range lens number 4, the times 22. We can definitely resolve the individual 10 micron lines and would possibly be able to resolve them down to 5 microns if the graticule had been ruled with them. Finally, the times 60 lens number 6. We can see how the image drifts around as the stage plate is racked up and down to achieve focus. Nothing's really fixed and solid with these instruments. There's a continual interaction between user and microscope. I couldn't find a human louse to compare with Robert Hooke's micrograph of one, so we'll take a look at this specimen side of a pig louse having similar features. Starting with the times 5 lens number 1, we can see the overall shape. I'm not impressed with the image produced. Unfortunately, there are no illumination controls, just the reflection of a nearby angle poise lamp provided by the small substage mirror. The major advantage of a single lens microscope is that there are only two refractive boundaries for the light to pass through, resulting in a much brighter image than for the compound microscope. One reason for Learn Hook and Hook opting to use theirs instead of the compound ones which were available at the time. This time 7 lens number 2 shows a marked improvement. We're now starting to see detail on the pig louse. This image, provided by the times 30 lens number 5, does surprise me. Once focusing is brought under control, it's really impressive. Look at the detail on the claw and the hairs which are visible on the legs. Unfortunately, I'm unable to provide an image for the highest power times 60 lens number 6, as the specimen slide has quite a thick cement ceiling ring to the cover slip, making it too thick to be mounted between the stage and the turret plate. This is why microscopists of that era mounted the objects on needle points or in stage forceps, so they could be manoeuvred into place under their extremely high-powered and short-focus lenses. I am certainly impressed by these simple microscopes which are capable of producing such excellent results in skilled hands, and due respect must therefore be paid to those early pioneers whose acute eyesight, dexterity, artistic skills and unlimited patience, working in such poor environmental conditions compared to our own, 
who nevertheless managed to produce such outstanding results.